Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to open up the Wanho Electronics and we're going to make the uh, mod to the uh, for the uh, uh, extruder fluctuation problem, hopefully. So, um, I haven't really found anything on the internet as to how to open the um, one hole case so I'm just going to give it a shot so it appears there's some small torques on the bottom there's some larger allens and, and that appears to mount something probably the power supply so I'm going to remove the recess torques um, there seems to be what five seven of them uh, three five seven yep so seven of them I'm not sure what size torque this is. It's a smaller one. Um, I just pulled it out of my tool bin and it fits. So uh, they're in here rather snug. So uh, not too snug, but you have to use a little bit of force to to get them out. Uh, you know, I'm going to kind of record this and I'm going to kind of split it up and speed it up. So uh, you won't have to watch the whole thing. But one of the things I did want to show is especially uh, opening the, the case because I I looked last night on the internet for quite a bit and I could not find how to open this case and so this seems to do something but that bottom seems to there seems to be a power supply in here and it seems to be catching the bottom. Um, I don't see because this seems to be pressed all the way around. Um, I'm going to remove these just in case they catch on anything. I don't think they structurally hold anything other than supposed to be the spool, but I'm going to take them out anyway. Um, cause again, it looks like some bracket back here. Now there are some screws on the back too that are fairly recessed, the same size torques. So I'm going to take those out also because maybe this slides backwards and that's the problem because I can't see taking the, the bolts out for the power supply. Um, So this back comes off, and yes, as I anticipated, um, that power supply stops it from coming out, but now there is the board. There is the board that we need to solder. I'm not sure if you can see that. So. Uh, So it looks like I should be able to remove, so there, there's, I'm going to remove this uh, cable that attaches it to the display and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this board out. There seems to be some larger hex screws in there. I guess I just have to revert to the old-fashioned way. This doesn't fit in there very well. I'm using one of these. So I can't seem to find a hex tool of that size. The 
problem is I'm not going to be able to get up against the, uh, the side with this because it's, it's, you can see it's butted right up against this and I can't get in there with that and turn it so I'm going to have to go back to finding something that fits. Or at least I can jury rig to fit. Okay. So we can now remove that. And this piece over there. Power hot end. So that's not too bad. So I'm going to come over there, take you off the tripod, and see if I can't get a few closer up shots here. Long story short, let's see if we can get there. I'm not sure if you can see this. So here is the hot end right here. So as we're looking at it from this angle, this is the hot end, and according to the video, this is the leg of the MOSFET that we need to uh, solder. And then to the back side, we're going to have to go to ground. So power, power seems to be this end one right back here. So this is power. So it seems to go power, hotbed, hot end. So we got to take the ground from this and then connect it to that. So uh, I'm going to solder this. I I'm not going to video this part because I need both hands and be a little bit more articulate and everything. So, But uh, I'm going to solder this and then once I do that I'll come back and I'll show um, how I made the connections. Okay, so we have it soldered on the back side, so we soldered it to the negative or the ground on the power. So here's the power, here's the ground. I kind of snaked the wire back along the board and brought it up this way. Um, just to kind of, I, I don't know, provide some tension relief a little bit rather than coming up straight from the bottom. And then the, that part was the easy part. Now the MOSFET part uh, hopefully you can see it here. It's kind of hard to hold this board. So the, the MOSFET part right is right here. This was a little bit hard to get soldered to, to really take. Um, and it's a very small area. So notice the way I lo also looped this wire back and brought it along uh, this way through these two blocks and then around the back. So uh, since this sits up top, it shouldn't be a problem. And this gave me a good... Um, good connection to the, the MOSFET foot. So uh, the um, other point is, is is make sure you tin your wire. Uh, again, I had uh, I used a pretty good grade solder and, and I still had problems getting it to adhere. I don't know if there's a lacquer on here or what. However, it took a little bit to get it on there. And uh, again, you want to be you know cognizant of uh, cognizant of yeah I get that right static electricity I mean it, it you know so you don't short out the board so you do want to be grounded when you're doing this and the use of grounded soldering iron um, you know also you want to be careful because in between here there's two little jumper pads so it is a pretty tight fit I wouldn't recommend this for a novice solderer you know if you're an immediate you should be fine 
or just really, really take your time. And, and if your eyes aren't so good, uh, you know, I used to set a magnifying glasses, make sure I get in there with, uh, uh, you know, micro tip soldering iron too. So, um, you know, keep it kind of uh, neat in there. So, anyways, so this this is it. I'm gonna go back and and reassemble it now. So again, you can kind of see. I'll try bringing it from this other angle. Sorry for the bumpiness. Hopefully this is coming out because I can't see the screen of the camera of how I got this on here and how. Now the wire, I used a pretty good grade of wire to, to loop this back since this is dumping ground for the uh, the hot end. So I, I forget which gauge wire it is. You know, however, I, you know, it's a, you know, fairly good gauge hookup wire that I have laying around. Um, you know, and it's it's uh, comparable to the to the wires actually that that go to the power unit itself or the head to power it. So uh, I'm pretty comfortable with that fact. So again, um, looking in the back here. See, so, yep. I just want to double check I got the right one. So yep. So fan is on the outside, and then um, hot end, hot bed and then power so it looks like everything should be in line so I'm gonna go ahead put this back together and then we'll see how it works one of the other things I wanted to point out inside the case if you can see it there I can't see the screen um, there's some pretty good stanchions that hold the board off so the wire going along the back shouldn't be a big issue what I may actually do is put a piece of electrical tape along the back just to prevent any type of shorting, but it is ground, and I'm, sh I'm assuming this case is grounded. However, it doesn't uh, hurt. So just kind of wanted to show this piece uh, so you can see what it looks like inside there. All right, let's go put it back together. So again, real quick, just wanted to show this. So I put a piece, I cut a piece of electrical tape, and I put it over this uh, for a couple different reasons. Number one, I I'm pretty flush with the existing solder that was on here um, I think as you saw in the, the last piece of video however I did put this on here again this piece of electrical tape just to cover that off and then also uh, since the board is like epoxy coated so it's pretty smooth I also put it on here to kind of as, as a hold down for the the wire to kind of keep it um, you know in case it should move but you know you can never be too safe so just wanted to kind of show this this is optional but hey you can never be safe enough right all right, let's go back and, again, try to put it together. So we uh, got to put it all back together, and um, or at least this part, and I got the cables back in. Uh, make sure you keep track of which way this cable goes. Obviously, it presses up against there, and it's notched here, so no biggie. Because uh, you do have to remove this, as you saw, and I did t it did just actually popped off the end when I was working on it. So uh, everything went back in pretty good. Uh, one of the things I did, and I do not recommend this, do this at your own risk, is I did power it up and test it before I buttoned up the case. It's sort of my typical thing, but be very careful. There's line power here, and uh, this is a bad thing. So don't do this unless you know what you're doing. Um, but anyway, so everything does check out, so I'm going to go and put the case, uh, button the case back up. Okay, so we got everything back together. Um, boots up. This is good. I'm going to print one of my test cubes using PETG. I've got it set to 255C. It's climbing very nice. Now, um, the reason I started the video here is here's, it's coming into the range where before I would start having problems. So, um, past 230C, so we just crossed 230, it would start bouncing. Now, knock on wood, it's a steady climb. So right now, in, in the prior, it would bounce up like the 240, then back down to 232, bounce back up to 240-something, 250-something, and bounce. So you see a little bit of bounce right there. Um, so 252, 250, see how it went down to 250, 255. It's bouncing less, 252, 255, 252, 251. Because sometimes it would take, at, at, at this temperature, it would take around 20 minutes for it to stabilize, for it to actually start printing. So this is relatively good news, and this is probably the fastest, actually, it's reached this temperature since I've had the machine. 
However, you see a little bit of bounce, so I've got it set to 255, it's now 250, uh, 255, I want to see if it stabilizes in there, 252, 255, uh, the bed's still coming up, I got the bed coming up to 80, 80 C, it's now at 70, um, but we're still seeing a little bit of bounce, so 250, which should be, it should be at 255, it's far less bounce because normally this would drop down to 230 something. Um, so it's 255. I want to see if it stabilizes with time. 250. Because I also wonder, 248. Um, let's see where if it bounces back up. 253. It's still bouncing a little bit. It's not, not nearly as bad as it was before. However, it's, um, I'm interested to see how this, because we're almost at 70, we had 76C on the bed, so it should start here in a minute. So, 250... Two fifty five. So the bed definitely heated up faster, um, which is interesting. And the bouncing is not as bad. I used to get a twenty degree bounce over two thirty. Under two thirty, I really didn't have a problem. So I'm just wondering if the ground trace simply can't deliver the current or was attenuating the current. All right. So the printer is now starting. Um, Interesting. It set itself back down to 250. I want 255. Let's go back to 255 and see what happens. So 253, 250, 255. So 250s. So so far it's staying within a couple degrees. So let's see as it goes through. So pretty much right now, after the bed's re reached temperature and everything else, and and it's reset itself, it's staying above 250, which is good. Because one thing I found with the the Wan Hao is um, above 250, it gets it, it just gets kind of wanky. Um, however, no, th th this is a lot better because it's staying fairly close to the 255, the temperature. Because before I did this mod, it would bounce down to two in, in the 230, so it's pretty much staying between 250 and 255. Uh, as you can see it, and I do wonder if a little bit of this isn't the firmware too. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is check on a firmware upgrade. I was looking at the site last night, and so it's printing it out. I don't because one of the things I do is I want to see the quality because you'll notice in the last video I printed out some PETG for the Octoprint base, I, and I'm just not have, happy with how, especially in larger scale prints. It's been doing the pet G because uh, you know, and that's what got me looking at this in the first place. Is I'm not getting good adhesion between the layers, and I do think the temperature it did do uh, 1249 CC. I don't know if you can see there's a 249, 250, but for the most part. However, one of the things that I, I can't believe that the head is actually fluctuating that much. You know, in other words, it's it's losing and gaining a, a degree or multiple degrees within that time. Uh, so I think I, I'm thinking when I do the head, the the hot end change uh, with the all metal uh, Swiss hot end uh, that's coming, I may tr try changing the thermistor and see if that that does it. So you see, I'm now getting some 249s uh, versus the where it should be at 255, but now it's jumping up to 252. Um, 
I've got this. I'm going to try and see if I can't get a reading off the head. I don't know, I'm not getting such a good read. Let me try this side. I don't know, it's saying 42.6 C. I was getting 139 on the other side. Uh, however, if I do the base, if I do the bed, so the bed is supposed to be at 80, it says 79, and I'm getting 76.9 surface temperature infrared on, on the bed. So it's, it's, it seems to be relatively accurate in reading, but it's got a bigger surface area. I think part of the problem is the... Uh, they even bounced up to like 79. So it's still 76, 77.6, sorry. I guess maybe if I stopped ahead, maybe some of the motion is... Or I wonder if it's the Capcom tape, because again, 89.9. However, the bounce, I gotta say, is, is far less, but it still does bounce. However, again, I was getting a 20 degree bounce before. I'm probably within maybe 5 to 8 degree bounce here, so this, this is a lot better. And, and to be honest, I don't know how much I trust this display either versus the actual, because again, I, I, I have a hard time believing that the thermal mass of that head is going to change from 255 to 249 then back to 255 in a matter of a second or two um, because the thermistor seems to be mounted on there just fine again I just wonder if it isn't a firmware maybe a firmware issue or bug so again this definitely has made a difference and uh, the print is actually looking pretty good. So um, it won't be too much longer. Um, through the magic of video editing, we'll just jump to the finished cube. And we'll take a look at the finished cube because, uh, again, it seems to be about within 5 degrees or roughly 5 degrees on average that it's staying within now versus 20 before. So uh, we'll come back look at the finished cube. So we're back. It's printed out uh, our test cube. So uh, the test cube has come out very good. So one of the problems I was having with the PET-G uh, is that uh, the printer would burn it. And I don't see any burns in this cube. Uh, and it's all pretty much uh, adhered in a good way. So uh, I'm pretty happy. The, the, the 255 is a little bit hot. Um, I tended to like 250 better. However, because of the bouncing before, I would set it to 255, so it sort of averaged out. However, I think I would drop it down to around 250 now. Um, so again, it, you know, it does seem to still bounce a couple degrees, um, and, and I guess this has been reported in the forms. However, I got to tell you, it's it's hugely better than what it was before, because it you would make 20 degree bounces. Uh, above 230. Under 230 it was okay. Two, under 230 I really did not have a bounce problem at all. So it's only when I got up to do the PET-G, which is a little bit frustrating because I really like the PET-G. And, um, you know, I've got some hips filament I'm going to test. So, so again, I still haven't gotten, I've got wads of all kinds of new exotic filaments. And, and now having this fixed, I feel a little bit better about testing it. I've been actually waiting to test it until I put the all-metal hot end because most of the filaments like the nylon hips and everything require a lot hotter and the PTFE um, 
uh, insert in there, I'm a little bit concerned of getting it at the higher temperatures. You know, even at the 255, I'm a little bit nervous because that's technically around its melting temperature. So, anyways, um, this came out pretty good. Would I recommend doing this fix? Uh, if you if you're going to print, if you're having this problem, then yes, I would suggest fixing it. Uh, I do would consider it an intermediate um, skilled fix. Uh, I you know if you're used to taking things apart, putting them back together, use, using a soldering iron, and soldering small things, you'll be just fine. Uh, if you don't have that skill set, I would say enlist the, enlist the help of a friend or something like that. Um, and again, make sure you turn the power off. This is all educational only. Do all this stuff at your own risk. Uh, but, it, you know, at the end of the day, I think it was worth making this. I, I'm happy with the results. I'm happy uh, that it's closer. You know, again, keep in mind, this is, this. I paid 400 bucks for this whole printer, so... Uh, you know, it's not going to be perfect. You know, if I spent a thousand or fifteen hundred, you know, I would have different feelings towards it. I think than than I would at at four hundred. I mean, at four hundred, you sort of have to expect some bobbles. Um, I, I'm not sure. I know uh, Angus on Maker's Muse mentioned that Aldi, which we do have Aldi here in the states, is going to start selling this. Now, I haven't seen um, that here, but I haven't looked that hard either, and I'm just really wondering. Um, you know how this is going to work out if you know again Joe Average is not going to do be able to do this fix uh, however if you just use PLA I think it's fine because again under 230 I didn't have a problem it was only over 230 and I think that's pretty much you know they're really more endorsing it as a PLA printer maybe even a lower ABS printer uh, but anyways hopefully this helped you out it showed you how to open this case uh, it shows you how to do the fix, and it shows you the results of the fix. So, um, anyways, hey, give it a thumbs up if it helped you out. Even if it didn't, give it a thumbs up for all my efforts in doing this and videoing it. Because it took me a little over an hour, and I could have probably did this fix if I didn't video it. Probably 20 minutes tops by the time I pulled everything apart. Videoing it, yeah, that always adds doubles the time to most things, working around the camera and that. But, hey... I love sharing it with uh, you guys out there and hopefully um, learning something from this. So if you have questions, comments, leave them below. I'm happy. I really try to answer them as, as much as I can, given a day job and family life and all that other stuff. But like to hear from you guys. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.